Absolutely brilliant. I've just realized I didn't put the microphone in the stand. And when I was talking, I also didn't have the microphone on. How crazy is that? So I've got to do this talk all over again. And this is pretty early in the morning right now. And I'm, and I'm just pretty annoyed with myself. I've also made a slight alteration. If you know on the previous video, I had the microphone out here. Right, I've now got the microphone over here. So hopefully I've got to look at this way all the time to make sure that, that I'm talking to the camera, but I'm also talking to the uh, microphone. This is one of the problems of, 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 of running a bit of a Mickey Mouse operation in, in, in terms of all of this. Okay, let's get started then. Now, this is quite an easy session here, really. This is about opportunities and, and threats. Now, there are lots of opportunities for companies in, in the UK, e.g. British Aerospace, e.g. Green Technology. Green Technology, also uh, nanotechnology, also 3D printing. So basically, if you follow what's outlined in the KP, KPMG report, mass customization as well, if you follow what's outlined in the, in the KPMG report with their 10 mega trends, then the UK specifically can take advantage of, of these particular things on here. And also at the same time, in the UK, as we know, we have a low interest rate, we have lowish exchange rates. We have uh, the uh, Confederation of British Industries has, has said that if you can get all your supply chains right, then that's going to make a, a huge difference in, in the future. Also, we can use the smart materials market will be worth £805 billion in the year 2015. And also the growth, remember, demand was shifting to the east. That was one of the mega trends as outlined by, uh, by the KPMG report. Right at the moment, we do 7% of our trade with BRIC and we do 2.8% of our trade with, with, with China. So these are massive opportunities. We've also got, all the economist students will know this, we've also got MINT. What does MINT stand for? M stands for Malaysia, I for Indonesia, uh, N for Nigeria, and T does not stand for Thailand, which I thought it did. It stands for Turkey. So with, 80, with an 80 million population, I think Nigeria's got 130 million there. Indonesia's pretty, pretty large and... And Malaysia, I have no idea at all. Right, so these are the opportunities that we have. Okay, but what are the threats to the UK? Well, obviously the biggest threat you want to know now this is, is shale gas, and this is really easy to explain because one of the rising global stars is a global uh, is one of the rising global stars according to the Boston Consulting Report. And remember to mention that in your exam is USA and Mexico. Why is that? Is because the energy costs have fallen by twenty five to thirty five percent. So that's obviously really good. Uh, we in the UK have a 200 trillion, feet, 200 trillion cubic feet of shale gas. Uh, we only use 3 trillion cubic feet a year, so we could, have, we could be self-sufficient in energy for the next 70 years. However, right now at the moment, we've invited the Chinese over for all sorts of reasons to build our nuclear power plants, primarily because we can't build them ourselves. And we've offered them a very high price for their electricity. Now, I presume they made that decision before they found the shale gas. So, so the energy prices is the biggest concern of, in, of industry. But if they did have low energy prices, because we've already got a flexible labor market, our productivity is okay, uh, then firms would have a lower cost, and therefore they file profits, therefore they can invest more money in research and development, therefore they could create great, 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 uh, could invent products with USPs, and therefore they can have a higher return on capital employed. Okay, and at the moment, the Boston Consulting Report believes that the UK will become a rising regional star. Okay, we're holding steady on the global basis, remember? We could become a rising regional star. Well, surely if we had cheap shale gas, then we could become a rising a global star. Right, so I think in your conclusion, you've really got to say something like, well, okay, it appears that according to the mega trends, the KPMG reports, uh, and because the role of the government is helping our industry right now, the conditions are looking pretty good. And also remember that in the UK, we have in fact got 2% growth, which is pretty, pretty hot stuff. And at the same time, we have low interest rates, we have low exchange rates. Uh, the government has printed money and it's given, a, I know it's a very controversial move, but a lot of this money has ended up in, in the hands of the banks. Now we hope, we hope, we hope, we hope that the banks will lend that out to British industry. But remember, there's all that, talk about well we should be more like the Germans and the Germans have the meters land and and their banking system is is, is much better at lending out to, to businesses and giving a long-term approach rather than shareholders remember all of that argument okay and also the government is pretty focused on the street it's had a plan for growth because it realized that exports were the thing that was in fact going to save the UK economy uh, at the moment the manufacturing sector is only 10 percent of GDP in the year 2015 in 1992 whatever it was 20 percent of GDP 
and they've invented these catapult centers which are focused on the fast growing technology sectors like pharmaceuticals, green energy, uh, car making, etc. 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 So also I think the games market is on there as well, which will improve which will uh, please a lot of you gamers. So there are a lot of opportunities for the UK in, in terms of what's happening out there, and there are some threats, and I've actually missed off the well, no, some of the big threats. It's really like the Asian economies and, and the Asian economies are now becoming very, very powerful. They have cheap labour, uh, but the, the people work incredibly hard. They have incredibly flexible labour markets because their welfare system is much weaker than that that is in within Europe. OK, the UK has a flexible labour market in relation to Europe, but not in relation to to the East. And also they are creating lots of uh, engineers, etc. And they are actually starting up their own big brands, which we have in the UK. There's one thing that America, that America's got, and the one thing the UK's got, it's got big brands that are well known throughout the world, which is why a lot of countries are keen on buying up British companies, because British companies have a have the brands. Super dry. Jaguar Land Rover. I'm trying to think of more now, and I'm just stopping. So I'll just stop there, and I uh, hope you have a nice lesson. Thank you.